<laughs> Breaking, flying battery, return. Yeah, I, I love that. Like, I feel like this game missed a few opportunities to like um, uh, do those little like in between level cuts. Between level transitions. Yeah, because some levels just don't have one. Right, you just uh, levels over. Here's the next one. Right. It's, that was one of like the really nice touches that Sonic 3 added over Sonic 2. Yeah, I got mad opinions on Sonic fucking 3. <laughs> yeah, now the Sonic 3 transitions were one of my favorite parts as a kid because it really created this whole idea that it was this, a world you yeah, were going like, through. It's, it's sort of like why I liked Adventure, where it's like those, those, like, those, uh, Overworld hubs don't add anything per se, but they make the game feel more cohesive. Oh yeah, no, the, the Overworld hubs... Well, I think they do. I think I think the entire like feeling of you know just just like this this like yeah, this, coherent world this feeling more cohesive it does mean something. Yeah, like that 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 is a tangible like addition to the game that I feel you know. It's it's yeah, one of the reasons that I think Sonic Adventure One is better than Adventure Two. Yeah, no, it's Sonic Adventure One is an extremely charming game. <laughs> yeah. Also, anytime like they make they they try to use like institute areas where you can kind of get a sense. In, like, they use sprites to give you a sense of what Sonic looks like from multiple angles that you wouldn't, like, see him in the Genesis game. So it's interesting to see, like... Because it's interesting, those, uh... In that era, when they would portray Sonic in different mediums, he would have different, like, degrees of what he looked like in 3D. So, like, one of my favorite things about 90s Sonic, uh ancillary material is like, it's the 90s, so Sonic's quills are a mohawk. But, like, this very specifically shows you that, like, oh, this interpretation of Sonic has, like, a more even quill distribution. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was, like, I remember seeing um, uh, the Sonic cartoon and going, wait a second, does he just have one layer of quills? Because in Sonic 2, the first Sonic game I played, he's got, like, you know, a whole bunch of them back there in the special stages. <laughs> yeah, and they show extra extra care to make sure that's clear in these 2D, uh, like, whenever you see, like, bits of Sonic's back in this game. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I do appreciate all these magnets all reacting. I'm talking I don't remember what the point was. <laughs> I, I really appreciate, uh, the magnets reacting, too, if you have an electric shield. Yeah, no, level. that's a great touch. This game's full of great touches. I'm sorry, Gogobob. Were you trying to say something? Because I really would. I don't like... remember anymore. <laughs> I apologize. I went on a long tangent about how many quills Sonic has. <laughs> the answer I'll, is I'll nine. I'll watch this later and try to remember. Nine entire quills. <laughs> Just only nine. No more, no less. Oh, that's. I remember that Jet Set Radio. Fucking Jet Set Radio. Now that is a game I want. That is a game I want. That's the series I want to come back. Yeah. Really? Be I love following Hideki Naganuma on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Hide Hideki Naganuma's Twitter is wonderful. Dude, Burrito. The dude is exactly who you expect him to be. At the same time, exactly who you don't expect him to be. Burrito, he is probably yeah. the, the... He is probably the uh, Japanese game like adjacent guy I follow who has the best grasp of English. His English is actually really good. I saw him like being very like very happy that the RV's Twitter remembered that it was the anniversary of Jet Set Radio Futures release. <laughs> uh, whoever's running the RV's Twitter my theory is their boss just doesn't check on them enough. <laughs> <laughs> They've clearly found a niche. They're I, I mean I hate they're they're an arts and crafts project at this stage. Yeah, no, no, like like it's literally just a dude who um, uh, enjoys paper craft, and somebody's <laughs> giving him money to do it. Uh, as long as he like you know keeps an army. It shows engagement. Craft. The kids love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, we want to believe that. You know, it's like secretly like they've got an entire mine of like thirty different people that you know are constantly like, cranking out Ava paper craft. <laughs> we met we met one of the Sonic Twitter guys at PAX at one stage. <laughs> is it, so, so is it know. just like is it is it just a situation where Sega gave him some loose guidelines and said uh, go nuts? That was basically the explanation he gave. Like they, <laughs> you know, as long as you're not like making the dragging the brand through the mud, you're fine. Like you know, remember who's remember who's writing your checks, but like you know, as long as you like don't do anything like obviously stupid, you're fine. 
pretty so, much. That seemed to be the attitude he was taking. So you, but Sonic has done plenty that's obviously stupid. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. I know, and that's why it's sometimes on brand. That, 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 means, that means that you got, like, a lot of leeway to work with. Like, don't do anything Sonic wouldn't do? What wouldn't Sonic do? <laughs> Sonic would do anything for cash. <laughs> Chili dogs. <laughs> Chili dogs. No, no, no. I love I mean, the Sonic like, did, like a some fucking promotional deal with Hooters. <laughs> oh man! What, what's what is there left that Sonic hasn't done? Man, now oh, Sonic gross. needs to be involved. Now they need to like do a combination sequel to Sonic and Sega All Stars Racing and Hooters Road Trip. <laughs> I get in there. Anyone ever played that awful PS One? The worst thing in the world. Nope. On the wrong side. It's basically a drunk driving that simulator. That Wait, drunk driving Sometimes simulator? Sonic can't... That's very upsetting. <laughs> Hooters Road Trip for the PS1 is basically a drunk driving simulator. Does it, like, actively give you, like, a list or uh, a meteor for how drunk you are at the fact? No, it's just one of those things where, like, for... Like, the way that it controls... You, you steer left and your character... It's like you twisted the wheel, but you're, like... The game doesn't twist it back for you, even though you're using a D-pad. So, like, you t swerve, and then you keep swerving into the... and then you try to oversteer backwards, and you swerve in the other direction. I mean... It's, uh, what bad. are video games if not a way to do illegal acts and not get arrested? <laughs> Ice tea. <laughs> but the entire, the entire game is, like, two-minute maps where you drive to a different Hooters... And then, like, a, a lady in a Hooters thing welcomes you to Georgia or Florida or wherever, I mean, and then you drive Hooters to another guys, Hooters. Right? I mean, don't get me wrong, that's extremely Florida. <laughs> as, as a long-time Florida man, I, can, I, I have a pretty good read on what's Florida, and that's Florida. <laughs> it was just one of those things where it's just, like, the weirdest thing in the world, because it's like... Why? Why? I don't know why any of this is happening. It's just, oh, we're gonna drive to Hooters, and then we're gonna drive to another Hooters, and then we're gonna drive to a third Hooters. Look, look. If you if you if you were done by the first Hooters, you would have stopped, but you didn't stop. So clearly, <laughs> evidently, these done. Hooters have not fulfilled their needs. Yeah, you'll you'll be hungry by the time you get there. <laughs> Wait, people eat at Hooters? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Nobody sure someone does. I don't know who, but someone must. Oh god, have I told you guys my Twin Peaks story? <laughs> what? That's a question okay. and a half just okay, in okay. that statement. So, Twin Peaks is a, um, uh, apparently it was like founded by one of the television guys. Television show. Also a television show, yes, but think of something else that could, there's two of. It could be called Peaks. Oh, I hate this. Uh, <laughs> you already hate this story, right? It's one of those restaurants, yes. right? So, some of my wife's friends were in town, and they're like... Let's go get lunch. Get, let's go get dinner together. And we're like, all right, yeah, sure. You know, dinner with friends. What could possibly go wrong, right? And <laughs> it was the girl who suggested this. It was, um, oh, it was of, of this couple we were hanging out with. It was her that's like brought up. She's like, oh, I've never eaten at Twin Peaks. Let's go there. And I'm like, Twin Peaks? Oh. What is Twin Peaks? It's what a, could go wrong? I believe the term is restaurant, right? Yeah, that's, that's the correct name. Now, That's the scientific name. Now, were I, uh, were I 17 or 18, I would have been like, oh, I'm a look. Right? Oh. I am now a 30-year-old man, though. With my wife. I ain't looking nowhere. I am staring at my plate. When the, when the very polite waitress comes up. I'm not here like, to be horny on me. <laughs> like, like, I am not horny on me. I am, I am here. I am here just to eat. I am here to eat. I am not going to look anywhere. I feel extremely <laughs> awkward and uncomfortable. <laughs> right? This, this is where we're at. Please stop this. Right? I am, I am not in my elements. Is what I'm saying. Right? So I ordered their um, uh, their their Philly, their Philly cheesesteak. Right? Because hey, you can't go wrong with Philly. Here's the terrible yeah. part, though. Here's the thing that made that elevated this trip to this restaurant from like bad to awful. That Philly was really fucking good. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, whoa, this is like one of the best Phillies I've ever tasted. <laughs> what, what the fuck? I actually I've been want betrayed. to return to this restaurant just to eat the Philly. <laughs> this isn't right. I am not okay with this. You're not I am supposed aware to go of your love of sandwich. For the food. <laughs> 
I felt like I'd be lied to. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> this is not all if you right. Would, you built your entire restaurant on a gimmick, and then you... You chickened out by having something good that wasn't the gimmick. Yeah, I mean, like... Chickened out. <laughs> I'm Probably some going, chef in the back who's like, you like, know, oh, like I went Sequoia's to school for order, this. Like, she got hers and she was like, this is actually really good. And I'm like, I know! It.